Now for a fun example of geometric series. So we have the canter set. The construction of the canter set is going to be as follows. At stage zero, I just have the unit interval from zero to one. At stage one, I'm going to take out the middle third here. We're going to make sure we leave the endpoints in what remains. So I'm going to have one third being taken out of one segment, the original. So the total amount I remove is going to be one-third. For stage two, I'm going to remove the middle third of each of the segments in stage one. So the lengths we're going to be removing are to be one-third of one-third, which leaves me with one-ninth. And I'm going to remove that from two segments, so it comes out twice. So the total removed in stage two is two-ninths. Go to stage three. I'm going to remove the middle third of each of these four segments. So we have four segments. The length of the middle third of each of those is going to be one third times one ninth, which is one twenty seventh. So I remove four twenty sevenths. If we look at what's happening here, this is the beginning of a geometric series. So we can repeat this process, say, as many times as we like. We'll pretend we've done it infinitely many times. So let's take a look at the sum of the lengths of the segments that I've removed. I have one third plus two ninths plus four twenty sevenths, and so on. The A is going to be one third, and then what's left over is going to be one plus two thirds plus two thirds squared plus two thirds cubed, and so on. So this is a geometric series. A is equal to one third, R is equal to two thirds. The absolute value of R is less than one, so this geometric series is going to converge. Its sum is going to be one third, one over one minus our r, which is two thirds. So a one third in the bottom, it hits that three, and that becomes a one. Now what did we just do? I just removed, okay, all of these segments in here. The sum of the lengths of all those segments is equal to one. Problem with that is the length of the original segment is equal to one, which moves somehow I've removed all the length from our original segment. Now, I haven't thrown away everything because the endpoints at each stage always remain. So that means as I do this an infinite number of times, I'm going to be left with an infinite number of points. So somehow I've created a set with an infinite number of points, but with no length, no mass to it at all. Okay, the canter set has a lot of other interesting properties, which are probably a little bit beyond the scope of a calculus class, but definitely keep an eye out for them if you keep going. Let's take a look at the two-dimensional analog of the canter set, the Sierpinski triangle. I'm going to start off with a triangle, equilateral, area equal to one. I'm going to cut it up into four equal pieces, and then we're going to remove that middle equilateral triangle. So what do we just do? The area I just removed, there are four of these, so I just pulled out one fourth, and I've pulled it out of one triangle. So the total area removed is one fourth. I repeat the process. I go to this triangle here, say, take out its middle equilateral triangle. So the area I just removed is one sixteenth, okay, right there. And we're going to pull that out of three triangles. So the total area removed at this stage is going to be 3 16 We do it one more time. I pull the middle third out of this triangle. Okay, well, that's going to be a quarter of 1 16th, which is 1 64th. Then how many of these are there? Well, here we can just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But it's just going to be our previous number times 3. So we get a 9. Total area removed, 9 64ths. I add up that right column after I perform this infinitely often. What do we notice? We're going to get a geometric series. Okay, we'll have one fourth. That's going to be my A, and I can pull that out, which leaves me with one plus R plus R squared, and so on. So R is three fourths. Absolute value of R is less than one. So the series is going to converge with sum one fourth, one over one minus three fourths. Got a four hit and a one fourth from the bottom, which leaves me with a one. So when I perform this process infinitely often, I pulled all the area out of this triangle. 
what's left over, okay, note we're keeping the boundary for each triangle in what remains. So we're kind of removing like the set which has, this triangle which has no boundary on it, just the open subset. So we're left with an object, well, which has a lot of one-dimensional mass, but no two-dimensional mass.